So we've had lots of problems with nozzle clogging lately. And I'm afraid it's possible that the uh, little short uh, Teflon tube that, that's inside the, the uh, heat heat block that acts as a heat break for the PLA is uh, fried. Because <clears throat> I tried unclogging it last night and couldn't really get anything out. So either there's, there's a jam in there or this thing is completely fried. So I am running it at 248, the, the uh, heat block at 248, which is the maximum that the machine lets me set it at. But it's nominally a 240, uh, 240 uh, uh, degrees centigrade heat block. So when I'm unclogging it, what I usually do is I leave everything hooked up and I unscrew these screws in front. Of course, I've, I've got the heat block heated up. I don't have it heated up right now, but when I'm unclogging it, I do. Unscrew this, the uh, fan in the front, and then the, the uh, print head comes off. And then you have access to the uh, access to the uh, hole where the filament goes in. You can push this needle up and down in there. I've since learned there's also needles that go up to the bottom that are you know 0.4 millimeters. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get some of those. I don't have them now. And there's also uh, cleaning filament you can use. I'm gonna get some of that later, and I'll I'll show you how, how I use that later. But I'm just, I'm just really afraid that the little short Teflon tube is fried. And so I did buy some replacement tubing. This is a uh, Bowden tubing. It's called Bowden tubing. It's really just Teflon tubing. PTFEB. So this is actually for a different kind of a printer that has a uh, uh, Bowden uh, uh, f f filament feed where the, the, uh, the drive motor is on the outside of the machine and it feeds through a really long tube. So this is really a lot longer than I need. But this tubing is good for 260, according to the specs. So, the uh, reason I bought this kit is because it has a tubing cutter, so that way you can make sure that your ends of your tubing are completely flat. Because if they aren't flat, then uh, filament can um, can uh, accumulate at the end of this tube where it goes into the uh, nozzle. So, I also bought a replacement nozzle. This is the the micro Swiss nozzle. So it's for this printer. It's, it, I'm not putting in a hot, a, a, uh, all metal hot end because I'm printing mostly with PLA and I am able to print PETG at 248 successfully. So I don't really need an all metal hot end. So, so this tubing fits inside here like this and uh, that provides the heat break so that it only, the filament only, um, only uh, liquefies when it gets to the very tip of this. And that helps prevent clogging. So. So we're going to be replacing this too. I'm going to keep the old uh, nozzle just in case uh, there's a problem with this one. But this one is, uh, I think it's it's um, brass inside, but it's got a uh, hardened uh, anodizing or something on it, hardened cover. So, so I'll have links to this in the um, description. So it's, it actually has, it has a nickel uh, uh, plating, so that, that makes it last longer so I'm not really printing with abrasive uh, filaments so that's not a problem but I figured longer is better so the only thing we need to do is we need to hook this back up and then we need to take this print head off so I'm going to show you how to do that uh, next there's three screws we need to remove to get this print head off the carriage the first one holds the shroud on so first we'll unscrew this one and the shroud should come off okay and there's two more, one back here. Man, let's see if we can get away with just taking this other one. Let's tighten that one back up. I'm not sure we need to take that one off. We need to definitely take this one off. So we need to take that one off. Oh, this, 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 
is the fan. I see then that exposes two other screws we need to unscrew to get this off. Okay. They're all three millimeter screws, so they all work with the same Allen wrench. Oh, that's it. Okay, that's all we need. The back one in the back we don't need. So, all right, so let's flip this over and we'll see what we got. I'm gonna put this metal tray here to support everything. Because from what I've read. To tighten this up properly after you disconnect it, you really need to have the uh, heater block heated up. So you want to tighten it when it's hot. So we want to have it on a metal tray so we don't have to worry about it messing things up. So now we need to remove this uh, old nozzle and then when we do that, the uh, plastic tube should come out. So these are, I've been using these for uh, routing uh, filament, either to the top of the head or through the side of the uh, enclosure, but these are actually replacement tubes that came with it, So, but I'm using it for other purposes. These are, the end, the inlets of these are kind of messed up now, so I, I wouldn't want to use this as a replacement tube now, that's why I got the new tubing. Let's go ahead and take this off and we'll uh, see what we got inside. So to take it off, I'm going to hold the print head in place with this uh, adjustable wrench because you have to put some torque on it. We don't want to mess things up here. So that's got a nice firm grip on it. And then this is a nine millimeter uh, socket. So we want to set it up on uh, so we can unscrew it. So let's see how hard, easy it is to get out of here. Yeah, not too hard. So it, a little bit of resistance, but then it just popped off. Let's see what we got inside there. All right, so we're about to pull the tube out ourselves. So let's do that. And yeah, as I suspected, this tube doesn't want to come out. That's the first problem. There, we got it out. So suspected, the end of this is fried. See that? So you can see that it was constricting the flow of filament through it. And so this is definitely melted. So I'm really hoping that this uh, higher quality tubing that I bought will be able to stand up to the temperatures I'm using in here. So. so I think this is the biggest part of our problem. I probably could reuse this nozzle, but since I got it out, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put in the new one. So the first job is to cut the end of this tubing off completely square. This is a little bit uh, crooked here. So we're going to use our tubing cutter. So the tubing goes in the cutter, lays in there. So it's flat. And then you just press the cutter and it makes a nice squ square cut. So now that we have the end squared off, we need to mark how long we need to make this tube. So we'll use this tube that came with it, that should be the right length, and we'll use this magic marker here to mark where we're going to cut it. And we'll put that in the tubing cutter, and we want to line it up so it's just beyond that thing there, and then we just squeeze, and that's it. So this tubing cutter, I think, is worth the, worth its price. I would definitely get this, because you're you don't you want to be taking this apart a lot, so. All right, so that'll fit right into the uh, new uh, nozzle. And we just put, push it in here. Hopefully it's, yeah, it should, it should seat there. Now this insulating uh, tape here, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. I'm probably gonna buy some new, a replacement for this at some point, but for now it looks like it's okay. So this, this protects the, um, uh, area here for getting to the filament that's around the nozzle for getting too hot by providing some layer of insulation around the heat block. So we're going to tighten this by hand and then we're going to tighten a little bit with the uh, wrench, I think. Let's go ahead and 
put our adjustable wrench on here to hold it. I'm going to tighten it up so that it just stays in there. It's not feeding in there, so let's get it, push it down a little harder and we can get it to get the uh, threads to engage. Alright, so now the threads are engaging. I'm just going to tighten it up just so it's just snug. So we have it just snug. We're going to, um, now we're going to heat the block up to a maximum temperature. And then once it's up to maximum temperature, we're going to finish tightening it up. You don't have to do it too tight, but you want to make sure it doesn't come loose. But you want everything heated up because then otherwise it might come loose when it heats up, so we don't want that to happen. So we want it to be tight when it's operating at its regular temperature. So I'm going to go ahead and heat that up, and I'll come back, and we'll finish tightening it up. Okay, it's up to 248 now. So we're going to be super careful. We don't want to burn ourselves. So we're going to put our adjustable wrench on here, which is still at the right tightness. We'll just tighten it up. Then we're going to tighten this up. So now it's tight there. All right. Now we'll turn it off and uh, let it cool down and put it all back together and then we'll try some test prints to see how the new new uh, nozzle works. Hopefully the, the clogging will be over at least for a while. So just to, uh, if, you're, if your heat break tube looks like this, you're probably going to have nozzle, you're probably going to have uh, clogging problems. That's, that's my, <clears throat> my suggestion for today. So, all right. And we have plenty of uh, tubing left over to do uh, tubing routing, whatever we need to do, or replace this in the future. So we're, good looking, we're in good shape. We've got the tubing cutter. So we're in good shape for the future for replacing this as necessary. But I'm hoping this higher quality tubing will stand up to the temperatures better. We'll find out maybe in six months. Or if we, next time we have clogging problems, I'll take it apart again and we'll see what it looks like. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Post a comment if you have any questions or ideas, and I'll try to respond. That's all for now, but more videos are coming. And if you want to see them, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification icon if you don't want to miss one. This is Beta Signi signing out, and keep looking up.